All right, guys, so we have our model all blocked and all cured. So the next step here is going to be um, setting up the mini star, and we also want to paint our liquid foil on the model. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get out the liquid foil first. You guys know it's kept down here. If you don't, now you do. And you want to get this brush out as well, kept in the same spot. So. don't usually waste the time of getting a dappin dish out. I just kind of get my my brush and drop the liquid foil right onto the brush. I'm making I'm making a video. And that's Bobby. Hi. <laughs> Everybody knows that hi around here. Sometimes I'll just dump it right on and just oh, let me not bump my phone. So really, you don't have to paint the whole model. Um, I just like to paint, you know, a good amount of the soft tissue area around the teeth because it just makes it easier for it to separate. And um, you want to do it all the way around, buccal and lingual. So I just dumped some more of the liquid foil onto the model, painting it around here all the way. And you'll see the color of the model change when it's saturated enough with the liquid foil and I'm just going to add a little bit more. You don't want to have it too thick because then you'll actually get um, separation in your tray against the model. So it does need to be, you know, absorbed, but you also want to make sure you can see it. So just check again. You'll, you can tell it's real shiny right there. So I'll just thin that out a little bit on the, all the occlusal surfaces. And, um, and then that part's ready. Perfect. It's ready to be set up in here on the mini star. So um, here is the mini star. Um, first thing I usually do is just make sure it's pulled away from the wall because this part up here gets super hot and you don't want it to hit any of the wires back here. Um, this valve just needs to be opened about a, a half a turn. It doesn't need to be opened all the way up. And you just, this is the power button here, so we're just going to turn that switch on, and then it just takes a minute. While that's warming up, um, or I'm just waiting for mainly for this screen to go back down to zero, like it did, and that light to turn green, and that's what I meant by warming up. Now, in the cabinet up here, when we do the Essex retainers, uh, standard Essex retainers, I'm always going to use the 1.5, so it is going to be up here in the cabinet. So here is the 1.5 clear splint material, okay? So that's what we're going to pull out. These bags, it is extremely important that it is sealed shut as soon as you're done um, getting the material out. See, it says right there, keep bag, bag sealed. Um, if moisture gets in here, it actually ruins the tray material and when you heat it up you'll see all these little air bubbles and that's how you know the material has gone bad. Um, so if you heat the material up and when you take this, say you uh, are heating your material up on here and then you take this off and on your material you see all these little bubbles, it's because moisture got into the bag because the bag wasn't sealed um, and it talks about it on the back. Um, so just make sure you reseal the bag. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it opened up. Now in the bag there is a barcode and uh, inside the bag here you just have to dig it out. So make sure you put this back in. So here's your little barcode, okay? Now this barcode is going to scan the, into the mini star. Right here there's this button that says scan. So you're going to hit scan and you'll see when you hit scan that this little barcode light comes on down here. So you're gonna scan the barcode right in there. You'll hear a beep and it's gonna automatically set your time um, for the Essex tray. I love that, it's like my favorite thing about it. Okay, so let me set my phone down for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull out one sheet of the material here. And this is what it looks like. It has two blue cellophane uh, wrappers on it that you have to peel off. And um, I use a scaler to do this. Sorry, this is like the worst setup here. I need a better, a better holder. Okay, 
So I'm just going to use the scaler. I can get it right on the end and you can just poke a little hole in it and it just makes it real easy to kind of grab that cellophane and just pull it right off. Perfect. Um, same thing on the other side. I'll come back on the other side. Try to keep your fingers off of um, the material. That way you're not getting fingerprints all over the fresh Essex material. So now it's transparent. You can see right through it. I'm going to go ahead and load it into the reservoir here. And it lines up just perfectly. So it goes right in there. And then this little lock plate is going to go on top and it lines up in the grooves here. I am doing this with one hand and it would help if I did it right. So it's gonna come over here. So you can see this is the little handle here. It needs to be towards the front. Once you have it sitting on top, you're gonna go ahead and lock it tight. So, and these are not going to meet. You just wanna make sure that you have this slid over far enough. Next thing you wanna do is take your model and center it over here on the platform and um, you don't have to have a big base on the model for the Essex retainer um, because if it's too tall it actually won't allow this plate here when it's flipped over to close all the way and the latch won't shut so you do want to make sure you have a little bit of a base but it doesn't need to be super thick okay so just get it centered you see it's just as long as it's in the center here of this little um, textured plate then you're good to go so the next step here is going to be to move um, the I don't even know what this is called a heater we're gonna put the heater lined up with where our Essex material is so that it can start heating it up and getting it hot so once you do that automatically your timer is gonna start counting down so um, let's also while I'm Allowing that to count down is when I will come back over here and make sure that my material in the bag is sealed all the way with the Ziploc. So, and put your little barcode scanner back in there to make sure that it doesn't get lost so you have it for when you need it again. Now, if I was making an Invisalign uh, retainer, I would actually add an additional five seconds to the heat. It beeps during the last final seconds and then it's going to do an additional countdown of five seconds or count up I should say. Once that little light turns green, you're going to want to slide this all the way back and it's very hot so be careful. You can see the materials kind of bold down. You're going to flip it over right on top and then make sure that you get this lever and tighten it on now as soon as you do that it's going to automatically start um, putting pressure into the unit to suck down the essex material and it takes uh, the 120 seconds to do that so it's going to count down and when it's done i'll show you the next part so i was saying as far as if you were making an invisalign retainer you would want to add an additional five seconds on to your heat and that would allow the material to stretch just a little bit more um, overall making the retainer tighter now uh, Invisalign retainer is also um, you don't want to do a ton of blocking out on that really you don't do blocking out at all unless you have a void a hole or an air bubble in your model that needs to be sealed off because we want the Invisalign retainer to be as tight as possible. Uh, just a couple other options that we have here on um, tray size so uh, or thickness I should say we have a one millimeter. I don't use this one as often. Um, this is really something that we'll use for like a surgical stent, um, a temporary it's, it's pretty thin, it's pretty flimsy. Uh, sometimes we'll use it as a temporary retainer for somebody who's in like an implant, um, temporary crown, um, but has to have like a retainer on there because they went through Invisalign and you don't want anything to shift around. So that's a good time to use the one millimeter thickness. Two millimeter thickness is the other option we have. This one I use quite a bit more. Um, Dr. Smith sometimes will make like in office night guards for his patients that don't want a traditional night guard but they need just a little bit of something um, so I'll use the two millimeter for that 
and one millimeter though, 1.5, I'm sorry, 1.5 millimeter is gonna be your standard size that you're gonna use for everything. Okay, so now our timer's done. You can see this little blue light is flashing on the air and you just put, push that button. You're gonna hear all the air um, pressure come out of the unit. So now you can go ahead and remove your latch. You're gonna flip this over, undo your lever, take this off and it's not hot. It's all perfectly sucked down and ready to be trimmed. Yay!